What's up, YouTube? This is your friend, The Neighborhood Movie Nerd, back to give you guys everything that is going on in the world of movies and TV. And today, I am going to be reviewing Logan Lucky, the new movie from Steven Soderbergh. Now, Steven Soderbergh has not made a movie in quite some time, so did this movie hold up to the standards of, say, Ocean's Eleven, or was it more along the lines of, say, the movie with Ronda Rousey or Gina Carano that I can't even remember the name of? Well, let's find out. This is my review for the for Logan Lucky. Bacon. I said no bacon. <laughs> You, Logan, mustn't be as simple-minded as people say. People say that. <laughs> by Steven Soderbergh, who is back from his retirement from the last four years with his last theatrical film being Side Effects in 2013, although he did direct the HBO original film Behind the Candelabra, starring Michael Douglas that year as well. In his return to the big screen, he reunites once again with the guy whose career he made back in 2012, Channing Tatum, who this time around stars as Jimmy Logan, a man trying to outwit a family curse by ripping off the Charlotte Motor Speedway during the Coca-Cola 600 race. Along for the ride are siblings Clyde, played by Adam Driver, and Melly, played by Riley Keogh, as well as escaped inmate Joe Bang, played by Daniel Craig. As surprisingly enough, hijinks do not ensue this time around. And I mean that with all certainty, this is probably the first ever heist movie I've seen where little to nothing goes wrong. It goes completely against character for the type of movie this was pitched as, but it really pulled a 180 on me because for a movie about hillbillies pulling off a robbery, this was one of the most methodical, thought out, and very overall slow paced movies I've ever seen. And I'm still trying to get a grasp on whether or not that added to or detracted from my enjoyment of the film overall. Overall, the direction from Soderbergh is superb as always. His cinematography and editing is well done enough, but as always with at least the Soderbergh movie that I've seen, the acting is what seals the deal for this movie. As Soderbergh is well known for working with star-studded cast, and he does it again here. We have an extremely well-rounded cast, but first for the main players. Now going into this film, I thought for sure Daniel Craig was going to blow everyone else away, and he did do a great job, and he did steal every scene that he was in. The problem is, is that all of his best scenes were in the trails, I felt he was also not in the movie as much as I thought he was going to be. A surprise for me, though, were Channing Tatum and Adam Driver. Now, these two had a very tough job in terms of having to play the Southern Hick as well as be fully fleshed out characters that didn't fall into cartoon territory. And they both do spectacular jobs at that. I particularly like Driver just because of how morose and one note he is and how that actually adds a lot of the humor in the movie. Channing Tatum also surprised me a lot because this might have been one of the first movies that shows that he had acting chops. So for I what I don't mean what I mean by that is I don't I'm not saying that he wasn't bad in 21 Jump Street and 22 Jump Street and all the other movies that he's been great in over the years, but those movies he really just kind of showed his comedic chops without actually showing what he was capable of as a grounded dramatic actor. This was the first time that I probably saw something like that from him. And they especially focused that by showing that with his love for his daughter, which ended up being a really sweet and great character motivation, which and was never once distracting. Unfortunately, where the movie falls, as I find, is that outside of those main four leads, I have to say the majority of this cast, and this was a massive ensemble cast when it was pitching all these trailers, they're either all wasted or underused. They've got Seth MacFarlane in this movie, and the only thing he really does is a British accent that somehow sounds less convincing than what he does Stewie on Family Guy. And to add insult to injury, I think he's only in three scenes in the movie. You've also got Sebastian Stan in this movie, literally just to look pretty and drive a car, which sucks because his intro, when they're setting up his character, is great. It's just they do nothing with him. Literally, the only purpose for Sebastian Stan being in this movie is he's there to yell at Seth MacFarlane right before Seth MacFarlane gets punched again in the face by Adam Driver, and then he sells him out off screen. Katie Holmes is also there as Channing Tatum's ex-wife, and I thought that she would have been more of a foil for him and more of a motivation for him, but she's also barely in the movie and really doesn't do anything. And then in the last 10 minutes, Hilary Swank shows up as the agent that's supposedly gonna bust open the whole thing and get them all arrested, but then the case gets closed, she ends up getting nothing to do, they try to do that whole twist ending where she ends up like, oh, she's gonna go undercover and expose the whole thing, but, it le but that's when the movie ends, so it makes no sense to add insult to injury, she's just a complete cartoon of a character, so that's another one wasted. But I have to say, I believe that this movie's biggest flaw the fact that, in my opinion, the trailer pitched a completely different movie as the trailer pitched the zaniest, stupidest looking comedy of the year, when in reality, a lot of the humor is in more of the subtleties, and it is really a very slow pacing, subtle movie. That's not a bad thing, as I still enjoyed what I got, but there were just parts of this movie that I felt dragged for me. The humor was great, it just felt very few and far between, the acting from the leads is fantastic, but all the supporting players felt wasted or like cartoons, and the payoff from the heist, it doesn't even happen, so by the time they try to pull the switcheroo as to how they get away with it, it just feels undeserved because they're never caught or ever in any day 
In terms of jokes, though, I do have to say there was probably one joke in this movie that had me dying, and that's the part where they make a reference to the fact that George R.R. R. Martin still has not written The Winds of Winter or A Dream of Spring, and as a Game of Thrones fan, that appealed to me personally and made me laugh my ass off. Still a good movie. I would definitely recommend tr attempting to watch this movie at some point, but overall, the movie is com pitched, com pitched completely differently than what it actually is, which is really disappointing because I, if I had known this was going to be a serious drama, I definitely feel like I would have enjoyed it more. Great overall direction and acting from the main leads, but definitely did not get all that I would have wanted out of this movie. I am only giving this movie 7 out of 10 stars. So that's my review for Logan Lucky. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. Also, be sure to click that like button and the subscribe button. Also, follow me on Twitter at Movie Nerd Review. Also, head on over to the website, MovieNerdReviews.com. That is it. I will see you guys next time. Go!